one of the very well-known verses in Genesis says, As long as earth endures, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. And we thank the Lord that that's one of his promises to us. Isn't that amazing? And he's true to his word. It also says in Leviticus, and I know this is again an Old Testament, but it says, if I can find it, because it's a very small Bible here. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am the Lord your God. And that's why we gather our provisions this morning, because it's actually in the Bible and we give these willingly with a, a cheerful heart to those that need it. So we're going to start by singing, give thanks to the Lord our God and King, his love endures forever, for he is good, he is above all things, his love endures forever.
Lord, that even when we don't feel it, you're working. Even when we don't see it, you're working. That's so true of harvest time. That seed is down in the soil and we don't see very much happening. And then it emerges and it bears fruit. And so often, that's how it is with ourselves. But I thank you all this morning that you are a faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. And just now, if you'd like to take your seats, you've invited a link to come up and share a testimony about God's provision. Thank you, Lynn. Rachel's asked me to share with you something that occurred last year. It was about, I think it was October, November time, and I went into the Halifax Bank to withdraw £700. The lad that served me was in a rush, and he said, put the pin number in, and I did. And afterwards, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to check that because I didn't see, I didn't check the amount because it was hurrying me. So when I went home with my £700, I went on my phone and no money had been deducted. So I phoned the Halifax Customer Services and asked how long it would take for that money to come out. She said it's instant. I said, well, that's what I thought, but on this occasion, that's not happened. So she asked for my details, which I refused to give over the phone. I said, can I have the branch direct line number and I'll bring them myself. This was early on the Friday afternoon. And I rang repeatedly for a couple of hours. Nobody answered. So I know that if you book on bonds at the end of the day when you work in a bank, you stay behind until they do. But I thought, well, that's their problem, they've not answered the phone. <laughs> so over the weekend, I thought, well, I'll just go in on the Monday. So it was pouring with rain and I had to park further away than I would have liked. And I parked on double yellow lines and thought, I'm going to the bank and I walked in and asked the young girl that was in there if she could, if I could speak to the manager. She said, well, I can help you. So I sat at her desk and I said, I came into the bank on Friday and withdrew a sum of money. And she just put her head in her hands and she looked up and she said, please tell me that it was 700 pounds. I said, it was, and if you'd answered your phone on Friday, you wouldn't have had to work late on Friday night. <laughs> so I then gave them my card, and they then took the money from my bank, which I'd had in my pocket all weekend anyway. Um, a short time afterwards, um, my husband randomly walked into the kitchen and put a hundred pounds on the table, and that's unheard of. And he said, oh, that's to get whatever you want, put it towards the shopping or whatever you want. Well, I didn't think any more of it really um, at that point, other than what can I spend it on. Um, and then, not long after that, bearing in mind that by this time I'd forgotten about the 700 pounds, but not very long after that, I got a check through the post. And uh, I opened it, 
and it was an, an unexpected check made out to me for exactly two penny six hundred pounds. So within a period of about two months, the seven hundred pound that I had returned to the bank, I had got back. So honesty is the best for seeing God repays. And Rachel put me on the hot and asked me to share that story that I told you last week. church and uh, as, the, as the little ones make their way out to Sunday school, um, just yeah, uh, it's really hard and I know I've definitely found it hard going from one week being on the stage singing really loud and kind of uh, praising the Lord up, up on the front here and, and actually going down into the, the congregation and praising him, it kind of it really challenged me a little while ago where God was kind of saying to me, just, it's not necessarily about the proclamation of the words that we sing within our worship, but it's also about the condition of our heart, how we, how we come to the presence of the Lord in that sense, where we can come, yes, we don't have to sing, but we love to sing and we love to proclaim the goodness of God in that sense, but... Bye. It's never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. But in that sense where, as, as Christians, we love to proclaim the, the word of the Lord and we love to sing and worship him aloud, but the, the God really challenged my heart and said, actually, you know, are you coming with the preparation? Are you preparing your heart in a way that is fully serving, submitting, kneeling down at the foot of the cross where the words that we sing, do they really mean that to you? And that's an incredibly hard concept to to kind of really kind of take hold of in the sense where as Christians we 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 want to come and we say that we're coming into the house of the Lord into the presence of God with a heart that is ready to meet Him, and it's easy sometimes to come in on a Sunday morning or wherever we are and sing the words or listen to worship, listen to the latest Hillsong Elevation, whatever it might be, and sing those words. But do we really mean those words that we sing? Is our heart in that place where? The preparation and the kind of the, kind of the humbling, the, the stripping back to the point where God is going to work in us. And that's, that's not anything to do with my message this morning, but it's something that I was just sat there or stood there this morning singing. And just feeling that God was stirring that inside me, prompting me to when he spoke to me a little while ago. And preparing and stirring our hearts so that we are meeting God in the presence, in the courtroom, in the place where he calls us to meet him. In a vulnerable position, in a vulnerable state of worship. In a vulnerable state of worship. Now, it's Harvest Sunday this morning. Um, and before um, I get stuck into my message this morning, I'm just going to quickly pray over the gifts that we've received this morning from you guys. So thank you so much for those things. But I'm going to pr quickly pray. Father God, yeah, we thank you for Harvest, Lord. We thank you that, that you've done an amazing work and a, an amazing kind of process, Father, that we've, you've given people the skill set to be able to kind of accumulate and grow and gather all of these different things that you see in front of us, Father God. And Lord, we just pray that as they go out into our community or wherever they may end up, Father God, that they are a blessing to our community. They're a blessing to the household that they end up in. They're a blessing to the person who eats them, who nourishes them, or who utilizes and uses them, Father God. We thank you that, that we've had this opportunity to serve, to serve you, but to serve others around us. We thank you for that this morning. In your most precious name. Amen. Okay, so as I started prep for harvest, then I'm conscious that, you know, we're trying to keep things to a bit of a minimum, a bit of a, an hourly service, so just bear with me. As I was preparing this message, I really felt that God had three things that he wanted to say this morning. And the first thing is, is that before a harvest, the seed needs to be sown. Before a harvest, there needs to be a process that we go through as, as people, but also a process that a seed needs to go through for it to be harvested, harvested. The second thing, what harvest is God doing in your life? 
And Rachel touched this morning in our worship about the things that maybe we, be going, we, we are going through that God is harvesting within us. The process of that harvest, to see the fruit of that harvest. What is it in you that God is doing to see the fruitfulness come at the end? But then also on the flip side, what harvest have you been through? Because I'm sure we can all see here this morning, we can, we can switch on to Facebook or YouTube or whatever platform we're watching this message this morning, but we can always sit, sit back and reflect upon the harvest that we have been through. The harvest that we've gone through over the years, it may have been recently, it may be something that's been ongoing for many, many years, that God has harvested within us. Now, I'm just going to read quickly from Luke 12, and it says this, and it's from the parable of the rich, rich fool, so it's Luke 12, 13 onwards. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide, divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you. Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consent in the abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a, of a, of a certain rich man yielded an abundance of harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. I'll say, and I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night you will, you will, your life will be de um, demanded from you. Then who will get, who will get what, what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things from, for themselves, but it's not rich towards God. Now, in that sense, I really felt that God was, God was saying that actually, you know, the man, he kind of he saw his situation, his circumstances, he, he kind of he prepared his, his fertile land, he prepared his life in a sense where he had so much, but there was no element of giving. He stored it up purely for himself. Now, as, as Christians, as people of, of men of God, maybe we, we kind of we look at ourselves and we, we kind of stand back and we go, do you have much or do you have little? This man had lots and he didn't know what to do with it. It was surplus to requirements. And in times in our lives, we may look at ourselves and be like, do we have much or do we have little? The answer to that is, in Christ we have much. In Christ we have much. But if we rely on our own understanding and our own kind of our own our own skills, our own kind of being, we, we have little. Because we're not actually putting our faith in Christ. We have little in the sense of faithfulness with Christ. We have little in that moment. God sees us as having much. Now our situations, our circumstances, our lives, where we find ourselves in, in a day-to-day -day basis, actually probably maybe narrows our view of that, that God sees us as having much. God sees us as having much in Him. In Christ we have much love, joy, grace, kindness, time, faith, safety, comfort, relationship, just to name a few things that, you know, as I was this message together, that they really mean everything to me. The fact that I have much in all of those aspects with Him. And I know for a fact when I'm walking in a walk where I'm not walking with Christ. I don't have those things. Where I'm trying to do things with my own understanding and my own strength, I don't have those things. I become a bit short-tempered, I become a bit ratty, a bit hangry at times. I'm not walking in the patience of Christ. I'm not walking with the faith and the love of Christ so that I, 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 can't, I can't do those things. But when I'm close to Christ, when I'm close to God, those things just become natural. People see those things. They see that as we are walking with Christ. They see those, those kind of those characteristics walking in Christ. Now, as I was preparing this message, I felt that kind of God said to, said to me, like, actually, there's a sense where, as Christians, we have already been harvested. We've been harvested by Christ. Because we've stepped into that commitment, that relationship with Him. We're walking with Him. 
we've been harvested. But that does not mean that the harvest has been reaped. Because God continues to do that harvest within us. He continues to do that growth. He sows the seed that Rachel was talking about in worship in us so that it can grow and become fruitful in that sense. And once we begin to fully understand that we have been harvested, that God is working within us, that he's doing amazing works within us, it becomes an opportunity. It becomes an opportunity for us to step forward as hands and feet of Christ, as the vessel of Christ, so that we can then begin to harvest others in Christ. So that we can step forward. And all of these produce down here, they haven't just miraculously turned up here this morning. There's a process that they've been through, a refinement that they've been through to get to this place where the seed has been sown in the field or the fruit has been gathered. Then it's been prepped and placed in a position like this. Some of it, yeah, following on from last week, you know, the saltiness has been added to it to preserve it, to add taste and flavour. And we need to live our lives as Christians that have taste and flavour because what happens then is that we become infectious. We become liked, we become loved, we become people that people want to be around. Just like some of the things here. Now, you know, I really love Heinz tomato soup. You give me any other soup, and there's plenty of other soups available. I, I don't like it. I have to add about, I don't know, several squirts of barbecue sauce to any other tomato soup just to give me flavour. What seed is God sowing in you? What added sugar or salt is he adding in you this morning to make you a Christian that people want to be around, people like to see, people want to talk to, that you're infectious in that sense? We have an opportunity in Christ so that we can understand that we have been harvested, but that we can go forth and harvest others. But before the harvest can be gathered, the seed needs to be sown. A seed that we plant in other people needs to be sown. Now I said this at house group a little while ago. Since we've been doing church, and it's been, this lockdown period has been really challenging for all of us. It has been. But I've said before, as church, we have begun to reach so many people that would not necessarily come through the doors of church. Where they're accessing church online, they're seeing kind of how things are done. And it, it's, it's amazing. It's, at, it's that opportunity for us to harvest, to plant the seed in our community and the people that we surround ourselves with to see a harvest. And I believe there's a great harvest coming. I believe God is doing amazing work and a great harvest is coming. And in that sense, I've had so many fruitful conversations with people at work, colleagues where, you know, we've shared the service on Facebook and I've got four people already that are asking me about church, asking me what it is like to be at church. I've been to church, I've done this, I've done that, but I've drifted away. And it's not necessarily the conversation that I'm having with them, it is God that has sowed the seed, and maybe it's family members that have sowed the seed previously, where there's going to be a yield. Where Christ is working in them, through this current situation, this circumstance, where there will be a yield. There will be a harvest. And that's such an amazing place to be. And an amazing position to be. Because we understand that we have been harvested. We have been given that opportunity to then go and plant that seed in other people. Now I'm grateful for the seed that was sown in me many years ago. As a young man growing up in Launceston, moving away at different points and coming back and always coming back here. But we always went to church. And then sport came and took, took a little bit of me, it took the time of me, it took a part of me. And it didn't take me probably until I was about 15, 16 to fully understand that I needed church. I needed it. Before it was kind of, yeah, I'll go. Fantastic, let's go. And then I found something that I loved, which was sport. But I knew when I was roughly about 40, 15, 16, when I was playing rugby on a Sunday or whatever it might be, that I had to go to church. Because I knew that all those the characteristics that I listed earlier, I wasn't walking with Christ. I was saying all the things, but I wasn't living it. I wasn't living it in the sense where those characteristics were at me. That was Christ within me. So what I then started to do is, is if I had rugby or badminton or cricket or whatever it was on the Sunday morning, I'd always find time to get to church of an evening. And back then there used to be Sunday evening services and it was amazing, it was great. But that was church. 
That was relationship. That was seeking the opportunity. The seed that has been sown. That was sown when I was such a small young man. That was becoming to be reaped and harvested. The yield was there. In that sense, I'm so grateful for the seed that was sown within me. But also along the journey, the people that interceded at different points, that dropped in at different points to see how I was going, or mentored me, or guided me, or spoke words of affirmation, or words of the Bible to me. And when you look back, when we reflect upon that harvest that we've been through, we can really understand that Christ has worked and harvested and sown seeds along the way. People that intervened, that spoke and did all these different things in our lives so that we get to the point where we stood here today. Not the finished article, no way. But with somebody that has got seeds that are working, that are growing, that are becoming fruitful in our lives as we move forward. As a teacher, I tell many people, every day is a learning day. Every day is a growing day. Every day is an opportunity for us to grow. For us to step forward and just say, look, I'm going to try this. I'm going to test the waters, God. If it doesn't work, God, give me the skills that I can begin to try different things where the fruitfulness is becoming abundant. The more and more we begin to do those certain things, the more and more we begin to step out in faith and start to use those little seeds that God has sown within us. Start to try and push it. Start to grow in confidence. Whatever it might be, God will begin to honour us. Those fruits will grow. But we have that opportunity to harvest. But before the harvest, there needs to be a seed that is sown. And it says this in Matthew 10, 5 to 8. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of, Sam uh, Sam of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you receive, freely give. Freely you receive, freely you give. As Christians, we cannot have done anything other than received. We have received Christ as our one true Saviour, as our as our kind of our God and our Father in heaven, so that we can freely give. The act of giving this morning fills us with those characteristics of joy, kindness, happiness, all of those different things. Because we have freely received, so freely we give. We've not paid anything. God paid everything. God paid the ultimate price so we can receive but freely give in that sense. Jesus doesn't just say to the disciples, crack on, get on with it. He demands that they go. He demands that they go. They, they freely receive him. They freely receive him as their teacher, their rabbi. So they must then go. Freely go. Now, He's not forcing them. In that sense, he's not forcing them. He's not holding their hand. He's not like as a dad when Esther's trying to run around and try to be the amazing, crazy little child that she can be on the side of the street. And I'm holding her hand. I'm not, I'm not coercing them. Like, Jesus wasn't coercing them. He wasn't guiding them in that sense. Freely go. Freely go. Now, as... Christians, I've already said that we need to be the vessels, the hands and the feet of God. In that sense, we must freely do those things. We must freely be those people that are confident to step forward in faith where God has placed us. Else, it just becomes really hard. And the world butts back. But if we freely go in that position where faith is so strong, our faith in Christ is so strong, we begin then to fully work with Christ. We're not working on our own strength. We're not going into the place where he's called us to be, to go rescue the Israelites. We're not going into that place with uncertainty. We're going in that place with confidence so that we can speak the word of God, proclaim that he is Lord and Saviour over all the earth, sow the seed of different people, so that we can see that yield and that harvest. So that we can see that yield and that harvest.
Growth isn't just something that happens and then finishes. It's a continuing thing. It's a continuing thing. Once something is sown, and I've said many times before, I am not a gardener. I'm not a gardener. I'm pretty good at cutting grass. I like doing that. But then it just grows again, which is fine. But I'm not a gardener in that sense. But in that moment where a seed has been sown, and Verity talks to me, and I think she's been educated by Merv in that sense, where there's this like biannual thing or whatever, it just keeps growing every year. It doesn't come one year, but then it misses a year and then it comes again. I'm just like, yeah, all right, crack it. <laughs> it looks pretty when it comes. But it's a continuing thing where this seed is growing. It's repeatedly growing. And it amazes me, you know, every year when we see in March the daffodils growing. And I love daffodils, I love it, I love them. They look so pretty and they smell so great. <laughs> That's about it, my understanding of it all. <laughs> pretty much. But in that sense, it just happens. The seed is planted. The seed is planted and it takes time. Yes, it might take a bit of feed and a bit of like water here and there. It might take that. But that's exactly the same within our lives where the seed has been sown at a point where God is beginning to manifest and do things within us. And it might take a time for us to step back and actually look at what God is saying and doing in our lives so that we can really reflect upon what fruit we might need or what Sorry, not what fruit, but what, what food we might need for that to be the case. And honestly, the food that we need is fellowship, the Bible, and relationship with Him. Because if we're not using those things to, to sharpen our, our Christian walk and our Christian faith with Him, then why are we doing it, or what are we doing it for? In that moment, take a step back and see what work is God doing in you this morning? What work is he doing in your life? What food do you need to replenish and source it with so that you can see that fruitfulness? Not just once, but time and time again where it comes every year or every season or whatever it might be. God is wanting to do that work with you. And that might be, this morning, it might be prompting you that you know, he wants to see a fruitfulness within your prayer life. It might be that confidence is your biggest thing, that you know, you've got a skill set that you know you have, but you don't want to use it. You don't feel confident enough to use it right now. God is telling you this morning, he's given you that, that skill set, he's given you that gifting. Your confidence isn't in you, it's in him. Be confident within him so that you can step forward in faith and faithfulness to see that skill set, that growth in that moment. It might be that you kind of be facing a current situation, a circumstance with a family member or work, and you're like, whoa, I don't know if I want to do this right now. I don't know if I'm ready for this right now. But that seed has already been sown. God has sown that seed. He's sown that seed in that moment in your relationship, in your position where you are, so that there is going to be fruitfulness. Now I'm a firm believer that the power of words, the power of the things we say, if we speak positivity over certain things, then we're going to see that fruitfulness. We are going to see it. Not it might happen, we are going to see it. We're going to see it. It might be that there's a, a relationship years ago that really kind of became sour and became fractious in that sense where that happened years ago. But in that moment, God had sown the seed. He sown the seed of certainty that he was going to have reconciliation in that relationship. In that friendship. In that position where there's that uncertainty of relationship. That fractiousness of relationship. But he wants to repair. He wants to sow that seed of re reconciliation. Or he has already sown that seed of reconciliation. So that relationship will become fruitful again. Will become fruitful again. It might be that there's a seed that's been sown that, of healing, of anxiety, depression, mental health, illness. It might be this morning that you've got something with inside of you that you're dealing with that nobody knows about, but God knows. God knows exactly what it is. He knows exactly what is going on in your life. He knows exactly what needs to be done. And He's sown the seed of healing so that we can confidently say that we have been healed by His stripes this morning. It might be that. God this morning is saying that you have much in Him. That you have everything in Him. You have much in Him. 
you were wealthy in him. Do we need any more? No. We only need him. But that's all well and good. We can easily say these things, but we have to live these things. We have to live in a way that we are at the hands and the feet of Christ so that the harvest that we have planted the seed for years ago will become, to fruit, will become fruitful in that sense. It's not just going to happen. The seeds that have been sown within our community, within our, our town of Lawson, within our workplace, within our family, if they just lay dormant, they're not going to become fruitful. We're not going to be able to have the harvest. But I believe this morning that that harvest is coming. That that harvest, the seed that has been sown throughout this whole situation of lockdown and COVID, the seed that the church, not just our church, but the church, has sown, will see a harvest. The, the fruits will be reaped, and there will be a harvest in that moment. Now, last year, David Waters came, and he said, look to 2020, it's going to be 2020 vision. And there's times where I was like, oh, we've got into 2020, you know, all these things are happening, lockdowns happen. But the clear vision that he spoke about, the 2020 vision that he spoke about, is that the church has an opportunity to see that harvest, to see the fruitfulness in that moment. That is the vision. That is the vision that God has placed on the church. That the seed has been sown and there will be a harvest. But on that personal level this morning, what harvest is it that God is wanting to reap and from you? What seed that is he sown in you? Now as I close up, I'm just going to invite the band to come back up. As we begin to think about and begin to kind of reflect upon, and Rachel said earlier on, let's, let's just take a moment to, to think about what it is that God is doing within you. What is it that the seed that God has sown within you in that sense? Now, it might be in that moment God prompted you. That God has started to have that kind of that, that feeling of warmth, of kind of a bit of a prod. It might be that you kind of you felt just this kind of nervousness, this anxiousness that God is doing something within you right now this morning. This morning you ought to be sat there going, I, don't, I can't see that I have much in Christ. It might be that this morning you kind of, you can see the kind of the journey that you've been on, the, the season that you've been in, and you saw that the seed had been sown, but you can't see that, that the harvest is going to be there. It might be that you can't see the outlet, the out point, the point where you're gonna, the season is going to come to an end. But God this morning is saying that you have much in Him. That you have much in Him. If that is you this morning, just I'd like you to stand where you are. And as the band just starts to play, you're going to stand in that proclamation that you're standing...
the seed that was coming forth. I saw a picture of a sweet William flower. I like, I like flowers, I like plants. I like much for vegetables. But when you have a, a sweet William flower, it comes with a, a head full of blooms. And each bloom makes a seed ball. And that seed ball is full of little black seeds. And it sits there full of seeds. But it isn't until the wind comes and the storms come and it all starts to get shaken about that those seeds start to spill out. And those seeds get scattered everywhere. And you don't see those seeds anymore. They fall back into the ground. And you know, it isn't until months later do they start to peep and go heads up. And when they start to peep their heads up, they slowly grow and they slowly grow. And they don't produce a harvest the next year. It's the second year until you get another bloom. It's a two-year progress. And sometimes you look at it in life and you just think, God, what are you doing in my life? Nothing seems to happen. I'm just sat here. What are you doing? And God says, when the time comes, you're going to rise up, you're going to burst forth. And you're going to start to blossom. And you're going to start to produce seed. Again, which is going to be scattered about. And you know, that's the process that God takes us through. And you know, sometimes you think, God, what's happened in my life? Who am I? What am I? You know, as we keep our eyes on Jesus, He brings us to fulfillment. He brings that harvest. It's then we can look back and say, thank you, God, for what you've done. And sometimes at that point, do we realize what's happened in our life? So let's just pray. Father, this week as we seek your face, open our eyes to what you have in store for us. Lord Jesus, sometimes we think we're useless. And I've thought that many times. But thank God for the season that comes forth. And Father, I just pray, will you start to unlock some of those seasons in lives this week? Will you start to reveal to your people the purpose, the plan, the destiny you've got for each one of us? Because Father, you've got a purpose and a plan for every one of us. We want to see your face, we want to know your plans, we want to know your way, and we want to hear your voice. Father, come and we open our hearts to you. Reveal yourself to us in prayer. In Jesus' precious name. All God's people say. God bless you. Have a great week. Keep rejoicing. You know, we have another thing in church. I say it gives us more opportunity to sing outside of church. Because God don't go short of praise otherwise. But we need you to praise Him. He inhabits our praises. Bless you all. Have a good week.